Client Tracks More Info tab can be found in both the Business and Personal Clients section. This tab is designed to help you out with things like questions that might need to be answered, missing information that might need to be found, or any type of client communication that might come in. For example, recording a phone call, an email, a walk-in, or a simply accounting request, QuickBooks requests, or any other examples that you can think of. Today we're going to show you how to utilize this and how to take the most advantage of this particular section. You'll see that there are two sections in here. The upper half is specifically designed for things like questions that need to be answered and missing information that needs to be found. The lower half is more for things like the phone calls, the emails, text messages, and any other communications that come in from your client. You can add any of these communications by going into the More Infos tab and then clicking on either the green button for the upper section or green button for the lower half. You can also do this from anywhere in the program by looking at the lower right hand portion of my screen. You'll see there's a blue circle with a question mark in it, which is the same thing as clicking the green button for the upper half, and the phone icon pertains to the lower section. These allow you to actually add these items from anywhere in the program, so you don't specifically have to go to the More Info tab to add one of these items. Let's start by trying a question. So I'm going to click the Add New Missing Information green button, and it's going to give me the following window. I'm going to change it to Outstanding Question. I'm just going to give this test for a subject name. This is to give your user a general idea of what you're looking at. Next, I'm going to assign this question to another user in my office because maybe this is the person who generally takes care of this kind of question. Next, I'm going to tell this person what I want them to know. So I'm simply going to type a few lines of information so that they know what I want them to look at. Now, I can notify my client by either calling them and leaving a voicemail and simply just saying, I've notified the client. Or I can click Send Notification down here at the bottom and choose one of these methods, which will retype out the question for me and fill out also a blurb that says we appreciate this back in a timely manner. Thank you for your time. Once you've got all this information entered, as the person leaving the question, this is all that you have to do. Simply click OK, and this will save it to the client's file. Now, if we log in as the user we've assigned this to, you're going to see a few things that'll happen. When this person logs in, they're going to get a list of items that have been assigned to them that have not been resolved. If this person was currently logged into the program, in the lower right hand portion of their screen they would get a little pop-up reminder to let them know immediately that this question has been assigned to them. If they have not seen the pop-up before, it will come up as well when they first log in. The bigger window will come up only when they first log into the program and will show them all of the items that are assigned to their name that have not yet been resolved. So now that I see this, I can simply just click View Info to call up the item from here. Now let's pretend that we've had a chance to talk to the client. So we're going to fill out what the answer is. And now we can list that we've answered this question, entered any information that may have needed to be entered into the system, and at this point choose one of two options. We can click Resolved to finalize the issue and just save it to the client's file so we can search it up later in future. Or what this user can do is say that they have finished this question as of such date, but instead of clicking the Resolve checkbox, they can then reassign it back to the original person who left the question in the system, which basically utilizes client track to keep that original user aware that this question has now been answered. So when this person clicks OK to update the information, it has now been reassigned back to the original user. If we log in as the original user now, the first thing we're going to see is the updated changes that come up on this user's screen. You'll also notice that in the pop-up on the bottom right hand corner of the system, it has the answer listed in the pop-up as well. So now this person who has re-received the question is tasked only at confirming the information is correct and resolving the issue. This will save it to the client's file, as it always will but it will no longer pop up as part of the list of items that need to be taken care of. However, this will stay on the client's file for as long as you keep them in the program or until you physically go in and delete that item. So what this means to you as a user is in future, if you ever need to call up anything that you've left on a client's file, 
you can go to the More Info tab and either click the Open Advanced Missing Information Form button for the upper section or Open Advanced Communication Form for the lower half, which will show the window that actually comes up in the morning. And then you can click the Advanced Search button in the upper left, which will then allow you to create a search for this particular client or any other information you want in the system. So I could say, show me everything for this client. Let's say, doesn't matter who it was for or whether or not it's been resolved, but maybe a specific date range. In this case, I'm going to search all dates. So within seconds, I can look at anything that I've ever left on a client's file, call up the information, and very easily see all the details I left for this particular client of that particular item. The same thing applies to the lower half. And the only real difference for the lower half is that when you first look at the items in here, the drop down menu will have no items on it. What we want you to do is click the little box beside the drop down menu and tell the program what are your most common types of communications. So, as you can see, some examples are emails, text messages, phone calls, and anything else that you can think of. There is no limit to the items you can put on this list. Once an item has been added, you can even search by this title later. Now you can also do searches from anywhere in the program by clicking in the lower right hand corner of the program with the little blue circle and the notepad on it, or the little phone icon with the notepad on it. That's the same thing as clicking the advanced communication form button, and it will bring up the search window.